Rodriguez, did I understand uh, correctly that you expect to be supportive of the uh, Panama, Colombia, and Korean free trade agreements? No, I expect to look at it when it comes to me, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to make it happen. I don't know in terms of the language how it looks at the present time, and so, uh, no, I haven't made any decisions any of those, but I'm hoping that it comes forward as, before us as quickly as possible. And at that time, I haven't actually seen it, in all honesty. I know that there's some problems uh, with, with the Panama uh, in, uh, trade agreement at the present time. Uh, and that almost deals with the banking and the industries and dealing with, with them down there, uh, with some of our businesses. From campaign rhetoric, what do you expect will be happening with regards to NAFTA? And specifically, cross-border trucking. Thank you. Well, real quick, uh, Secretary of Transportation, uh, Greg Hood's already acknowledged that we can't continue to disregard a binding provision of NAFTA, but we do know that. I mean, the Ed's over here is fine. We've been talking about this since day one. But politically, you know, it's a real loser. If you look at, at the votes in the House, where you only had three members that uh, voted against withdrawing the funding or restricting funding from the pilot project, that's how overwhelmingly the sense of Congress is on the subject. It's going to take President Obama to fashion something. I'm a big President Obama fan, and I was from the very beginning, and there's a reason for it. But what you're going to start seeing coming from the administration, in my estimation, is going to be a basic template that addresses all of those concerns that people have, whether it's labor or whether it's environment, and it's going to apply to just about every agreement that we have. NAFTA's in place. Where you're not just going to change it overnight. You can, you can make some sort of, there's some agreement. But I'm just saying that the president, I think, is working on this. And it's going to extend to Panama, Colombia, Korea. And the NAFTA situation is very unique because that is in place. But I think you're going to see the president. The president, by training as a lawyer, law professor and such, he understands binding agreements and clauses. And I'm going to tell you who really gets hurt. And the president's very aware of this. Right now, you know who's paying the price for this? H-E-B. Now, that's very dear to me and to Seal because they're headquartered. San Antonio. Uh, but the, and that's one of the greatest friends to Mexico. So it's really strange. The people that are going to suffer the greatest are those that have the best relationships and that are so interrelated and dependent with one another. Now, if you're somewhere in California, I mean, in, in New York or whatever, you don't relate to it like we do. But the president, based on, uh, on prevailing legal principles, understands we are bound. We are bound. And what he would like to see is the, the pilot project reinstituted, addressing all those concerns and putting those arguments to rest. And I think that's what you're going to see. And what he's going to propose is, you want to continue doing this? Mexico is within their rights to do the tariffs, and these are the people that are hurting. And so when you have these firms like HEB coming to members of Congress on both sides of the aisle, some of those votes that basically stop the pilot project, I say, will uh, we'll be changing. Uh, let me just uh, add, uh, I think this is, uh, we kind of assume that it's happened in the past, but this is also the first time we start working with Mexico on with, with resources in terms of assistance. Uh, and that uh, with President Bush's, uh, uh, what is it, 400 uh, million, uh, that I think also opens up opportunities for us to do a great deal of other things uh, in a more positive way uh, and, uh, and, and make something happen. Uh, uh, for uh, NAFTA, I, I really believe that uh, we have not done the right thing as it, as it deals with the infrastructure, and that we still need a lot of resources on the border, uh, on customs. We have uh, uh, problems with, uh, with, uh, with bridges that are still not open appropriately and creates a problem for us uh, there. Uh, we have some unique opportunities uh, that we can enhance, <coughs> excuse me, with cargo and, and rail. Uh, that we haven't taken advantage of, not only through the Presidio, uh, but uh, uh, through an Eagle Pass, additional into Rio and other areas, uh, and the potentials there that could happen. There's also opportunities that are being talked about now uh, that we could envision uh, in the future. Uh, you know, my, my farmers uh, on the border say, uh, Cito, can you do an amendment? And you can imagine if I, you know, Charlie, you can tell me, if I propose this, they will kill me. Uh, and, but it's, it, you know, Mexico, we, we have people that work in Amicadoras and come back to the U.S. and vice versa. We have 
uh, Mexicans that work on this side and go back uh, in terms of looking at an amendment that allows people to come back 150 miles back and forth uh, for, for produce, for a sheep and goat engine, for a whole bunch of industries. Uh, and this would be ideally, you know, ideal for uh, economic uh, and growth between us and Mexico and enhancing NAFTA. Uh, we, we created legislation that we haven't funded uh, for economic development between the U.S. and Mexico uh, and uh, that we could easily fund and make something happen there and create other mechanisms. We have more people in Mexico right now that are U.S. citizens than any other country. Uh, so in terms of nursing home care, uh, in the area of health care, and other areas, uh, for those of us that have lived in the border, uh, opposite of the stereotype, I went to Mexico for health care uh, up to the age of 30. Uh, and so, uh, so and, and it's, you know, people don't realize that when you live in Mexico, uh, I'm not saying the marriage it goes out on the other side, but most people do, uh, they live on the border. Uh, you know, and so, and that just makes sense that those are uh, opportunities in health, uh, in services uh, that we can continue to grow and develop. Uh, so I think we have some tremendous opportunities. I do have some concerns with what's happening with Mexico now, uh, you know, with, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the drugs uh, and the problems and, 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 the, uh, and the, the, the mafia. Uh, and and that, that can destroy uh, the country uh, and it's a direct reflection of that we have in the market that we have for drugs, but it's also uh, a, a direct, uh, you know, any, any time you have that creating, it's also uh, a problem of the government and not responding appropriately uh, to the needs of its constituencies. Uh, so we have to do whatever we can uh, to help out Mexico in that process. So. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your frank remarks and the discussion is very valuable. Thank you.